Hello students, a very warm welcome to my lecture today. The topic for today's discussion is taken from the syllabus of plant pathology. The specific topic for today's discussion is transgenic approaches for plant protection. Before we delve into the main course, let's first know what is a transgenic plant. A transgenic plant is a plant which has got desired characters which were not originally there. Suppose we want a plant with increased yield. Originally the plant is having low yield. It is producing less. So what do we need to do here? We will identify another organism which has got this property. Now we'll have to see what gene or which gene in that organism is giving the plant or the organism this particular property of increased yield. We will isolate, we will identify that gene and we will isolate it. Then we will incorporate that gene into the plant which has got low yield. This will give the plant the desired character from outside. So when we are externally inserting some genes into a plant or into an organism for having a desired character, the organism that is formed as a result is known as a transgenic organism. Now let's see how are transgenic plants made. This is a diagrammatic representation which shows how transgenic plants are produced. Transgenic plants are produced using various ways. Here two ways are given. The gene of interest is first identified and isolated. Now in agrobacterium mediated procedure the the isolated gene is inserted into a TI plasmid and the bacterium is mixed with plant cells. The TI plasmid will now move into the plant cell and it will insert itself into the plant DNA. Once it is getting, whether it has got inserted into the plant DNA or not, how do we know? We need to screen it. The cells will be screened for transgene. The transformed cells get selected with selectable marker. Okay, the transformed cells will ultimately give rise to the transgenic plant. The, it will get regenerated from a single cell, single transformed cell. This is one way. This can also be achieved by using gene gun method. Here the gene is made to replicate and gold particles are coated with it, coated with the DNA. Now this coated particles are used in this gene gun procedure. The cells are shot with a gene gun and DNA gets incorporated into the plant DNA. After it gets incorporated into the plant DNA, till this stage the procedure was different but after this you see the screen from the screening of cells the procedure is same. The cells, uh, the transformed cells are screened, I mean cells are screened for transgene then the entire plant the new plant with the desired character regenerates from the transformed cell, from a single transformed cell. So this is how we make a transgenic plant. From this overview, you can understand that this is a this is an elaborate cost requiring procedure. Now, why do we take so much of trouble? This is one question. We all know that population on earth is 
increasing exponentially every day. Now, this increasing population is not going to starve, right? So, who will feed this population? To feed this population, we need what? We need resource. Now, from where will this resource come? We need to increase the resource along with the increasing rate of population. By the year, survey says world population may reach 9 billions. Huge number. Food production will need to increase at the same rate to feed the growing population. So, there is a need to use genetic techniques to improve crops over the recent decades. Through the use of transgenics, one can produce plants with desired traits and even increased yields. Now, why do we need transgenic crops? According to the title of our lecture, we will focus here on crop protection aspect. Every year, we know India is an agriculture-based country. Every year, farmers face huge loss in their harvest due to attacks of various types of pests and insects. Now, resistance to insects and disease attacks is one of the primary aims of generation of transgenic crops. Transgenic plants are tools for helping in building up a resistance management strategy without which Agriculture cannot operate. Thousands and thousands of people in India are earning their livelihood on, I mean from agriculture. So this type of a resistant management strategy is a must that should be developed in a country like India. Now let's come to different types of plants where these experiments were carried out successfully. Tobacco and tomato plants were generated exhibiting insect resistance due to the introduction of modified Cry1A and Cry1C genes of Bacillus thuringiensis. It made tobacco and tomato plants resistant to attacks of Podoptera exigua and Heliothis Virusins and also Manduca sexta. Now, what is this Cry 1A and Cry 1C? CRY stands for crystal proteins. These 1, 2, 3, these numbers are for, uh, for the types for which these uh, crystal proteins are aimed for. These were isolated from Bacillus thuringiensis, they produce this toxic protein, cry proteins, the cry genes encode these cry proteins, which has wide, which has got a huge toxic impact on wide range of organisms. Apart from the cry toxins, Bt also produce insecticidal proteins named vegetative insecticidal proteins. It is abbreviated as VIP. During its vegetative stage which is toxic to a wide range of insects. So cry and VIP are very potent toxic agents that really help in combating this insect attack problems. Other examples are Bt cotton I hope you all have heard about this. Cry1AC gene transferred from Bacillus thuringiensis makes the plant resistant to cotton bollworm. It is also known as, it is scientific, the scientific name of this organism is Helicoverpa armegera. Bicanary nerma and hybrids such as NHH44 are Bt cotton vari varieties bred in India. This production of Bt cotton was first started in China in the year 1997. Thereafter, uh, by in the year 2002, it was started in India. And by uh, following that 
India later became among the topmost producer and uh, importer also for Bt cotton. Bt corn is another prominent example. Corn is one of the most important food crops worldwide. You know, multiple products are produced from corn. You consume the corn, I mean the kernel, the sweet corn and all. So many types of cuisines are made out of it. Corn starch is produced. Corn flakes are produced. So this crop needs protection. So to protect this plant, uh, Bt corn is resistant to European corn borer, Austrinia, Nubilalis, corn earworm, and corn rootworm. So, these three organisms were causing detrimental effects in this plant. So, to protect the plant from these, the corn plant was genetically modified, which became resistant to these three organisms. Apart from this, transgenic potato, tomato, cucumber and tobacco are also resistant to viral attacks. They are made in such a way that they are resistant to viral attacks. This is how transgenic uh, Bt cotton is produced. The gene of interest is incorporated in a binary vector and then made to transform. Transformation occur. This is followed by somatic embryogenesis. After somatic embryogenesis procedure, it is made to regenerate. After regeneration, as we have discussed in the beginning of our discussion, the regenerated plant will ultimately give rise to transgenic plant. This transgenic plant will now be taken out for field growth. This is a brief pictorial representation of how Bt cotton is made. Apart from insect resistance, transgenic crops offer a number of benefits that pave way for massive economic growth in the field of agriculture and crop science. Enhancement of photosynthetic efficiency and yield. This is something very important to have proper increased yield. The photosynthetic efficiency should be maintained. The, if there is a drop in the rate of photosynthesis, the entire uh, lifestyle of the plant will change. So, photosynthetic efficiency should be maintained very, very efficiently. Senescence is reduced using Bt. In Bt plants, uh, the rate of senescence is also less. They can combat stress very well. So stress response is improved. Cold resistance is also something very important. Plants should have some anti-freezing properties in it. So this anti-freezing property is rendered to the plants by incorporating a gene from a fish known as winter flounder. This gives, this makes the plant cold resistant. Herbicide resistance is another important aspect and overall quality improvement is also important. Finally, we come to what type of risk does it have to mankind and environment? This novel proteins expressed in transgenic organism can make way for allergic reactions. Now, we all know that all good things often have something bad in it. So these are certain factors that can cause risk to mankind and environment. So the proteins that are produced or that are expressed in the transgenic plant can cause allergic reactions in man when we are consuming it or when the environment is sustaining those plants. Detrimental effects on non-target species hold. This is very important. Sometimes the transgenic plant along with killing the pathogenic insects or along with kill, killing the target insects, it also goes and kills the uh, non-target ones or the beneficial ones. This will 
disturb the equilibrium in the ecosystem. Transgenic crops often interfere with the natural ecosystem. Sometimes the natural ecosystem, the balance or the equilibrium in the natural ecosystem is also disturbed. These crops are not natural. These are man-made ones. So this, these are often found to interfere with the natural ecosystem. So these are certain ideas of transgenic crops and its uh, trans uh, and the transgenic approaches for crop protection. One interesting point for your general knowledge you should know that flavor saver tomato was the first transgenic crop that was marketed in USA in 1994. This can always come for a one mark question. I would request my students to pause the video wherever required and take down the necessary information and make your own notes. If you have any doubts anywhere, please feel free to get back to me in the comment sections with your questions and doubts and I will try my best to clear them for you. If you find this video interesting or helpful, do share it with your friends and please, please Follow the lecture carefully before taking it, taking down in your exercise books. Hope to see you soon. Thank you so much for your kind attention.